progress can never be measured in chunks of days or years. It can only be measured at a macro level in terms of decades. For example, I can easily compare the 1990s era to the 2020 era, right? So this chunk is totally different than that chunk. So that was our internet era, this is the smartphone era, right? So the same way, biotechnology and life science industry can also be compared in chunks of 10 years. So today's video is about how and where biotechnology industry be, will be in 2030. So we saw the progress till 2020 and then the pandemic hit and then we saw a rapid progress. But let's try and predict what will be the future of biotech sector in 2030. So I have got 10 predictions more or less, which is going to blow your mind, right? So the first one is something of, of course related to our own weakness and what is our human weakness? Our human weakness is we fall sick, right? We are not invincible, we fall sick. But there's no problem in falling sick. The problem is one size fits all medicines. And that is where the next big thing which is going to co come in the biotechnology and life science industry will be personalized medicine. By 2030, the intersection of genetic sequencing and AI will revolutionize the field of healthcare, enabling a profound advancement towards personalized medicine. Now, we will be able to utilize uh, individuals in unique genetic makeup and doctors will be empowered to tailor make the treatment plan according to the patient's specific needs, resulting in more effective, more efficient healthcare delivery. So this is going to be a groundbreaking approach. Already a lot of research is going on and with the advent of AI, ML and genetic sequencing, we are going to see this happening by 2030. So this is the first thing which will happen by 2030. The next thing which we are looking at is CRISPR-Cas9. Now CRISPR-Cas9, more advancement, more uh, refinement is happening. For example, you know CRISPR-Cas9, you don't know CRISPR caliber, right? So CRISPR-Cas9 genetic editing tool will be enabled and it will be targeting uh, to more treatments of a wide spectrum of genetic disorders, heralding a new era of precision medicine. Now, potential elimination of uh, inherited chrom chromosomes or inherited, di inherited diseases from the human population can be done, offering a hope to future generations free from genetic ailments. So imagine we can treat this disease even, if, even before it has occurred by editing the gene at the birth level. Now this application of CRISPR-Cas9 in correcting the genetic anomalies will revolutionize the entire healthcare industry paving the way for again personalized medicine. So like I said the first is personalized medicine. CRISPR is going to be the enabler of personalized medicine. Next one which we are going to look at or see is nanobiotechnology. So we all have seen the nanorobots concept till date. But what if nanorobots can go and deliver the drug at a particular organ where it is supposed to be? For example, if I have a headache, then the medicine should, should go into the body in, in only here and not to my liver or not to my kidneys right? or not to my heart. So what if we could target the drug delivery? So nanorobots, nanobiotechnology, that is one thing which we'll see. The next thing which we'll see is diagnostic tool. So today, like you have congestion in the chest, so the doctor will say, hey, go and get an x-ray done. So you have to pass, your body will be exposed to harmful, you know, x-ray radiation. Instead, why don't we just uh, send some nanorobots inside there and find out where exactly the congestion is and potentially clean it up. So diagnostics. Diagnostic tool, that is where you will see nanobiotechnology taking off by 2030. The next thing which we are going to see is called as bioelectronic medicine. Now, what is that? This is new. Now, it will be used to treat chronic conditions. Bioelectronic devices are revolutionizing the treatment of chronic conditions such as diabetes, epilepsy, and paralysis. Now, by utilizing electrical signals to influence the body's biological processes, these devices offer a promising alternative to traditional pharmaceutical approaches. Now, what is a traditional pharmaceutical approach? Chemicals. We bombard our body with chemicals. Instead of doing that, we send electrical signals. Through precise modulation of neural activity, these electrical signals can effectively manage the symptoms and improve the quality of life of patients. So this is a great breakthrough. Next, what we will see will be advancing neural interface technology under this. Now, with the ongoing research and development in the bioelectronic medicine space, we will see enhanced neural interface technology. 
Now this progress will allow us for more targeted and sophisticated interaction with the nervous system. So till date we see any disease which is related to the nervous system, you cannot treat it the chemical way. It is very difficult. But here we have bioelectric medicine which can be used. Now this will open a new door to novel therapeutics, interventions and personalized treatment strategies. Now followed by that, we will also see pioneering therapeutic innovations in the bioelectronic medicine, which will lead to an era of tailor-made and minimal invasive intervention. So we don't need to, uh, you know, um, puncture the body skin or the uh, veins. Instead, we can send it through electronic medium. So this is a hope to millions of people who suffer today from neural diseases and neurodegenerative diseases. That's about the bioelectronic medicine. Now we'll move on to the next breakthrough area which is synthetic biology where we engineer novel organisms. Scientists will be able to meticulously design and engineer new biological systems from scratch ushering in an era from where custom made organisms can be tailored to accomplish specific tasks with unprecedented efficacy. So today you see we have robots. What if we have biological robots? What if we could create it a real one? Right. So that is one biological systems design we can look at. Next will be environmental re remediation. Now, these novel organisms which will be created through synthetic biology will be capable to clean up pollution in diverse environmental conditions and provide sustainable and natural approaches to remediate contaminated site. For example, we could create an organism which goes in and cleans up the mess in the ocean or the landfills and it could decompose it faster. So this will lead to more contribution towards the conservation of ecosystem and human health. So environmental remediation is one field where synthetic biology will play a very important role. The next we will see is biopharmaceutical productions. So these engineered organisms which we just now generated through synthetic biology will be instrumental in producing biofuels, bioplastics and advanced medicine leading to a paradigm shift in the pharmaceutical industry and contributing to a more sustainable and eco-friendly future. So today what we are seeing is uh, progress at the chemistry level and at the uh, not at the biology level when synthetic biology comes into picture you will see progress at the biology level and a lot of research is going on in this era in this uh, segment so you can keep an eye on this this segment is bound to grow the next one which we have and i have spoken about it multiple times in my videos and that is 3d bioprinting what if we could print our organs? What if we could replace the entire organ donation industry? What if we could do better drug testing instead of doing it on an animal? We could generate an uh, organ and we could test the drug on that organ, right? So 3D bioprinting is one big step towards making the human race a better place to live. And of course, stem cell uh, biology is going to contribute a lot here as well. The next one, which is already happening, so it's not like by 2030, by 2030 this, this thing will be out of the proportion, but right now also you can see, and that is AI-driven drug discovery. In fact, we do have a course on AI-driven drug discovery. Advanced algorithms will be developed, and this will be utilized to analyze vast amount of big data. What is that? Molecular data, predicting how molecules will interact with one another. Now this, we will have unprecedented precision because we will have AI analyzing it. Now this will enable us to identify potential new drug candidates more quickly, more accurately than ever before. The next thing which we will see is molecular interaction. So AI will be able to focus on understanding the intricate interactions between molecules and their impact on biological systems. So we will be able to predict it beforehand and we will be able to analyze that if this molecule is introduced in the bio into the biological system, what will be the potential outcome. Now this will revolutionize that traditional uh, drug discovery by unveiling hidden patterns and connections which we could not find till date. And this will open to a innovative treatment solution for the future. And this brings me to the next part of AI driven drug discovery and that will be rapid discovery. So we will be able to screen through 10,000 molecules within a period of 
one month and we'll be able to reach the clinical trials phase faster, right? So the drug discovery phase will be fast. So obviously we will have drug approvals faster and we will have more drugs coming into the market thanks to AI. The next one which I am personally excited about is quantum computing and quantum biology. So far we have seen uh, breakthroughs in the photosynthesis system. So we have developed a new understanding of the photosynthesis because now we know how quantum biology or quantum pr uh, processes influence the efficiency of the photosynthesis process. The same way scientists are learning the cellular process. Revelations about the role of quantum mechanics in cellular activities and biochemistry is going to revolutionize this field. And of course, after that, we are going to also understand the consciousness. Till date, we have worked at the biological level, but we don't realize how exactly a biological organ or like this human body is alive right now and will be dead later. So what changes? So as we understand quantum biology, we will understand how this body is alive right now and how it is dead. So exploration of quantum principles impact on human consciousness and cognitive processes we'll be able to analyze. Now this is where we come to an end of the quantum biology. Now we'll move to the next part of biotech exploration and that is not on earth, my dear friend that is in space. So we are going to see more biotech enabled research happening in the space exploration. So one approach will be sustainable food production in space. So we have already seen ISRO working in this. I have made a separate video on that. So sustainable food production in space. Then we will also see innovative waste management approaches because we don't want to create a landfill in space. Of course, that is why then we will also see biotech powered life support systems so that uh, it can lead to a better habitat and also we'll see about developments in the cryosleep because we have to travel in between planets. So how do, can you do cryosleep? So even work is going on in that direction. So these were like eight or nine places or um, 10 places where uh, biotech revolution is going to happen. But now the question is how ethical all of this is going to be. Right. So there will always be ethical debates. You know, when aeroplane was made or a typewriter was made or a computer was made, there were ethical debates. Right. So why should we, we be afraid of ethical debates? Instead, we should participate in it and find out how can we use science for our benefit. Remember, science, when it goes into the hands of egoistic people, a Hiroshima or a Nagasaki happens. But when science lands into the hands of common man like you and me, that is where science grows and humanity becomes better. Humanity lives better, human life becomes better and that is what is the aim of this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, concerns, comments or feedback, feel free to comment below or maybe if I missed some points, you can always add so that the entire biotech, biotechnica community can be benefited from that. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.